Good morning, good evening, wherever you are across the world and the universe. Welcome to my Quantum Living podcast at the intersection of science and spirituality. I'm your host, Anna Anderson, quantum teacher, intuitive guide, and above all, an inquisitive soul. This podcast is about how we can bring the various spiritual, metaphysical, and esoteric concepts and ideas validated by quantum physics and modern cosmology to the very practical level to improve and enrich our life experience as individuals, communities, and the humankind. Whether you are listening to this show while driving or commuting, doing chores around the house, relaxing on a couch, or flying in a spaceship across the galaxy, I hope you'll enjoy today's episode. Okay, let's begin. Hello and welcome back to Quantum Living and to my new mini-series Quantum Chat, where in each episode, together with my special guest Maren Mute, we will focus on just one topic, one burning question, one quantum mystery that probably everyone has a view on, but no real answer as we can only speculate and guess which is fun. Hello, Maren. It's so good to have you back on my show. Thanks for joining me for this special series of Quantum Chat. Hi, Anna. Thanks for having me. I'm really looking forward to this. I think we're going to be able to delve into a myriad of topics and really just get right to the heart (laughs) of the answer, (laughs) or at least the discussion for them. (laughs) Yes, and given its different format, obviously there will be a bit of challenge for us, but I am up to it and I'm sure you are too, so let's do it. All right. (laughs) Today's question is, when we are asleep, where does our consciousness go? This is one of the biggest mysteries of our life. We spend on average one third of our life on sleep, which is a huge amount if you ask me. When we are asleep, our brain waves slip down to delta of about 1 to 3 hertz or cycles per second, which is the lowest level of brain activity that keeps us alive. Now, we know that this is the time of restoration and healing of our physical body, including the brain. But what is absolutely amazing, which most people don't even realize, I think, is that our consciousness disconnects from self-awareness and apart from dreams, we have no recollection of our existence during that time. So for all intents and purposes, we are unconscious. Just like when you have a surgery under general anesthetic, one moment you are there and the next thing you know, you wake up very groggy one hour later when the surgery is over. You have lost the time from your conscious memory. You can't account for it. And only the clock and other people can tell you that you were under for about an hour or so. Same with sleep. One moment you drift off and the next you wake up in the morning. Unless, of course, you wake up during the night or have insomnia. And our body is running fully on automatic. For example, when it turns over from one side to the other to minimize the pressure on some organs. And what is also amazing is that we cannot go on without sleep for more than about 72 hours or so. And if we keep resisting, at some point we will simply fall unconscious and our body will force us to sleep. But the key point here is that we are unconscious when we sleep. So our consciousness detaches from our self-awareness and off it goes elsewhere. I believe, based on my spiritual insight, that sleep is the closest state to death. Our consciousness moves to other dimensions, other planes of existence, effectively to the other side, where we are attending classes, speaking with our departed loved ones, receive guidance from the spirit, from our spirit guides, or engage in many other activities, some of which can be embedded in a dream. If, for example, there is an important message for us to recall at the conscious level. So, what do you think? Where does our consciousness go when we are 
Asleep. Wow. Okay. I'm going to do my very best to go fast. So we're going to look at different types of sleep really fast. I'm just going to name them. We have lucid dreaming, and we'll touch on that in a second. We have an amnesic dreaming, and then we have an open state dreaming. So let's say that we have three primary types of sleep that our brain is going through. And what's happening is like a heater, let's say that we had a heater that we were running on all the time, a space heater. If we run the space heater too much, the space heater is going to short out and it's going to burn out. You're going to get that burning smell. Well, we, our body is electromagnetic organism and it has to go into that sleep state. It needs to shut down. Just like we have to shut our electronics down. We have to shut our body down in order for it to rejuvenate. Mm -hmm. It doesn't rejuvenate to the perfect state, but to the best of its ability. When we're lucid dreaming, what's happening is we are somewhat awake and somewhat asleep. So we are aware of our surroundings and we're also aware that we are in a quasi sleep state. And that's why we can uh, kind of control a lucid dream. This is when we have a lot on our mind. People naturally lucid dream and it's for a specific re reason. It is for thought processing should not be done every single day. Um, we have an amnesic dream. Now, the amnesic dream and the open state dream are two, two, kind of two in the same. Our brain either shuts down when it's relaxed, it's just like, ah, oh, okay, I'm asleep. And then it closes all of these little frequencies. So our, our consciousness, remember, is not residing inside this body. This body is a tool for our consciousness to yeah. view out of. So when our, we're asleep in an amnesic state, our brain just kind of shuts down all of these little frequencies and mutes the external world. That's why it feels like we just close our eyes and wake up. Then we have an open state dream where it's totally nice and relaxed and just the floodgates open. Now, everything that you're seeing in this state is a translation from your brain. It doesn't mean that's what it looks like in the ethereal world. With your brain in an open state, it has to translate different frequencies into something recognizable that it can kind of process. If it doesn't do that, then we go over into that short circuit mode and, and everything will close up. So that's why we can have nightmares. That's why we can have things that don't make sense. That's why um, we can have conversations with loved ones that have departed and they might show up in a human form. And they're showing up in a human form, not because they are in a human form, but because they have a very special energetic footprint, just like we do. And that footprint doesn't go away. That signature doesn't go away. So our brain picks up on the signature and translates it to imagine a human or dog or cat state. Um, and that's the same with everything else that mm -hmm. is on the ethereal plane. It's just an earthbound translation. So where does our consciousness go? It goes nowhere. It's exactly where it started and it's exactly where it is during the day. The only difference is, is our brain functioning on what our body's needs are. So that's why it shuts down to like a delta frequency. And if we're in fight or flight, we go all the way up to that gamma frequency. And we don't stay there very long either because that will make us manic. <laughs> it will make us really short circuit. Um, so, that, so everything physical, um, the brain frequency, that's all designed for the earthbound body. Our consciousness never disconnects completely. It just kind of says, hmm, okay, I'm going to stretch my arms out and, and take a look around in the ethereal space up here. Yes. I mean, I agree with you that it doesn't disconnect completely because probably at that point we would have crossed over. <laughs> yes, we would be dead. <laughs> what I, yeah, I guess what I mean by that is that it is not preoccupied with our awaken time activities because our thinking brain is is resting and our body is resting and so it takes this opportunity to mm -hmm. engage if you like 
with something else. And that's why I mentioned uh, not only speaking to our departed loved ones and any spirit guides on the other side, but also to continue its evolution. So, so I feel that we have come to the junction point of consciousness and the soul. Because when we talk about the soul journey and the soul growth and soul evolutions and, and soul learning, are we talking about or can we use the term consciousness and the soul interchangeably? Yes. And I think we should actually have that one in another chat. Because okay. <laughs> looking at those terms and comparing them is going to be longer than the time you and I have set aside for today. Okay. But I do want to say one more thing that you did mention when in your description of what um, is a common belief. And that is that our body continues to work automatically when we're asleep. We roll over and we don't think about it. But that's happening all the time. Our body is always working automatically. Yeah. We don't have to think about having our heart work and we don't have to think about having a breathing work. And we naturally shift side to side. If something is ailing us, if, if one hip is hurting, we'll naturally shift without even thinking about it. So it seems like it's happening more when we're asleep. And that's just because of the noise of the world, our brain has shut that out and it's, it's yeah. just quieted everything down. So it kind of highlights the behind the scenes working yeah. of our body. Yes. Very good point. Thanks so much for reminding us about that. But I would like to come back to my point of our consciousness or aspects of our consciousness being engaged in other activities which, which we may remember or not remember via a dream, such as learning, such as attending classes. In other words, to continue its evolution outside of the physical 3D reality. What do you think about that? <laughs> Again, I'm going to say we need another talk for this one. <laughs> um, because it's not necessarily in class. Yeah, it's not necessarily in class. It's not necessarily learning more on the ethereal state. Not like what we think it is. It's not evolving and, and progressing to another levels. Mm -hmm. What what's happening right now is it is focusing a tiny fraction of it is focusing um, to see and observe what life is like through this particular body. We're not down here to learn a lesson. We're not down here to um, make up for something we didn't learn in a previous life. We are here um, more for observational purposes for our consciousness so that's why it's really important to remember that this body is a tool of our consciousness mm -hmm. and our consciousness or soul doesn't reside within this body. It's using this body as an observation. And when we really look at it, this body doesn't even exist because if we were to take a microscope right now, we could, a uh, powerful enough one, we could look right through our hand because all we are are buzzing little atoms and so we are yeah. literally a hologram, which makes yeah. us the thought process of our consciousness. So we are the fluid thought process of our consciousness. We are the flow. Absolutely. Yes, thank you. And just one final point I'd like to make is that I actually prefer to use the term remembering or recalling as opposed to learning, because obviously we don't consciously remember or we are not consciously aware of the whole nature of our soul and we are only getting snippets of information. So I tend to agree that it's not about learning, but about remembering in a way that helps us enrich our experience of this incarnation. Mm -hmm. I like that. I do. I like that. Okay. So there you go. A brief explanation of where our consciousness goes when we are asleep, or at least some food for thought. <laughs> Thank you, Maren. We'll see you in the next edition of Quantum Chat. Thank you very much, Anna. I'm looking forward to our next discussion. You know, it would be really helpful if our listeners could give us feedback on maybe ideas of what they want us to discuss 
and just feedback in general on what they thought of this quantum chat. You can do that very simply by going to Anna's website. It will be in the show notes. Click on her website and that will take you to the full description of this episode where you will find her email address and you can write to her there. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's all for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you really loved it, please post a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify to encourage others to listen to it. For the show notes, guest and podcast info, reviews, comments, and much more, please visit quantumlivingpodcast.com. And if you'd like to dive deeper into quantum living and explore how you could work with me, please contact me and I'd be delighted to help and support you on your quantum journey. I am your host, Anna Anderson. I look forward to connecting with you in the next episode of Quantum Living. Until then, keep your vibrations high and be well.